Tristana, really great success there for Immortals. Um, and they followed it up with the, with the Rel ban. They've given up on the countering it with Janna Freak uh, out the window. We don't want to leave it up to, you know, timing errors uh, as far as sure. those engagements. So they just ban it away. I think that is actually very wise. Let's see what Immortals follow this up with because so far they're banning away a lot of these farming junglers from Iconic and he has he has had one of the lowest, uh, you know, jungle proximities for, for junglers. Meanwhile, Golden Guardian still had pretty decent early game numbers as a team, despite the poor record um, and, and with him, him farming quite heavily early on. So uh, we shall see if they're able to <laughs> still get out, uh, you know, at least step one of the plan because it has mostly yep. fallen apart for them uh, at the later stages. So the reason I mentioned, I, I know Golden Guardians have been playing less and less toward Niles as the season's been going on. Uh, the Ivern Hover is why I mentioned it, because last time these teams met, Golden Guardians won, and it was the Revenge Ivern game where he uh -huh. got clapped by Ganklink. It's supposed to be a counter pick. Ivern's supposed to win that one. It didn't go very well, and Niles was the reason they took that game. Um, but Golden Guardians, you know, they won their, their second game of the split. They won their ninth game of the split. Two and nine may well be their record at the end of this game. It's, it's like it's written in the stars, and they are against a very scary lineup. Hecarim dive, uh, a likely fasting Senna here for Raze, but Seraphine is an outstanding pick, and Golden Gardens have ordered the cornerstone of an outstanding composition. They certainly do, and we see another Skarner pick showing his face here, Freak. They've got Jinx, Seraphine, definitely strong team fight, huge auras here coming through, long range CC. If Skarner is zooming at you and Seraphine goes over the top as well, Skarner gets his pick of the litter. There's just so much CC there. Somebody is going down. Even if you have a QSS, it's, it's going to be hard to get out of that combo uh, because they have so many possible layers and so many speed boosts to make it happen with. Mortal's answering with more speed of their own, though, with the Karma lock-in. Um, could be a solo lane karma here. Uh, yes, you can flex it to do a, a double range bottom lane with uh, yeah. with Senna and Karma, and to try and combat a Seraphine Jinx lane and and, uh, and still be able to get some harassment down from Senna. Yeah, I'm generally not a fan of Senna alongside his range champion. It's actually why she's so good as like the AD carry player playing her because then she's alongside a Tom Kench or something, right? And and now your your kit works a lot better. So uh, yeah, I would not super love to see Karma Senna, although yes, it's, it's poke enough that you can fight back a little bit. It just doesn't quite use Senna to the full power level. That's all. Uh, definitely want to see what comes out of the rest of the comp. Um, Seraphine could easily be a solo laner here as well, of course, based on what goes on. Immortals get the last say. As long as they, you know, hold mid or top for last, they can flex that at the very, very end. I mean, kind of regardless, that's probably happening. So uh, unless they grab an Alistair right away, then you just know the lane. So uh, looking for that one to see what comes through. Aurelia off the table there as well. Um, you know, that I think helps free up Karma to play top lane because those can be really scary spots to go. Clearly Golden Guardians think top lane's not definite, definitively locked in with the Camille ban uh, coming on their side. So yeah, the, the Karma and Seraphine are both flexible. Seraphine's a better version of Karma right now. So, you know, Golden Guardians wins that part of that, that equation. And as long as the comp can keep Stick stay alive, Jinx can be an outstanding carry. Yeah, uh, Nar also a possibility for the top side for Immortals if they did uh, put the Karma towards support switching there. Quick, quick uh, Vagar shout out here as has been consistent in Immortals games. Uh, Insanity, you mentioned how much of the work he is doing for a lot of the damage dealt for this team for Immortals. You know, he's put in work, yes, on the Tristana, but also Victor, uh, Orianna, now Azir here, another backline AP Mage carry here for Insanity, one of the North American talent mid lane players uh, that they've been trying to build up. Um, and my eyes will definitely be on Xerse as I feel like there have been a lot of early games that um, he, he has actually been been a little bit questionable in some of the pathing and, and the early skirmishes that he does take. Top side Scion locked in for Niles though. Uh, tank match up here no matter what happens. And even if it, hey. if it is a Karma on top side and you're belting out, uh, you know, harassment there. So I'm very good at actually just soaking it up. And they're going to grab Lulu. They are grabbing a ton of supports, and it's exactly Stixay who is going to be the damage threat on this team. Now, Kobe, I know you know the answer to this question because I already brought it up to you. But there is one bot laner in the LCS with more deaths than kills. Anyone online can go ahead and place your votes now. Uh, but based on the context of this draft, I think you know where I'm going with this one. Kobe, what is your answer? Uh, it is, in fact, Stixay at the yes. moment. Now he is going to have multiple tanks on the front line, multiple support champions, heals, shields, 
everybody in this whole game is looking at Stixe. Immortals want to kill him. Gordon, Golden Guardians want to be him. They want to buff him up. They want him to carry the team fights. Uh, it's definitely going to be a high pressure game here for Stixe. Don't get hit. Don't go down. And one of the core aspects of Jinx is you need that first reset. You need the first kill to come through, so get excited, pops, and then everything dies. There is not a lot of front loader damage in this team, except for the Skarner pull. If Iconic gets a good target and you yoink in the Karma, that's get excited, that's the front line dying. You, like, you will, you, with get excited, you will beat Aatrox. Without get excited, you will lose to Aatrox. Lulu or not, like, you're just kind of out of that fight, kind of running away for your dear life. Like, that's kind of how that functions. So, uh, eyes are a lot on how the team fights start, the positioning of Stixe, and as the draft comes through, let's see what we got on, on the Immortal side. Aatrox got locked in. It is indeed uh, Senna plus Karma in the bottom lane. Azir in mid. There are, you know, several carry threats on the Immortal side. A lot of these champs can do plenty of damage. So at th that role is kind of spread out. And I mean, realistically, none of the side lanes are going to win for Golden Guardians. If there is a Jinx and that is it. You've got no pressure anywhere else come mid game. Yeah, it's definitely a team game here for the Golden Guardians. And there is definitely Stixay at the center, even at the center of their level one. Uh, as we head out here for possible summoner spell advantage for that lane, they they want to get everything in their favor towards the bottom side of the map. So uh, they aren't going to find anyone in the side brush. And that is the end of that. All right. Now well, they made their attempts. There's no shenanigans that they're going to track down. But it does mean if the 2 on 2 tries to play, you know, cheeky in a brush or something, they can know what Rays and Destiny are up to. Notice that it is going to be farming Karma, by the way. Notice the Spectral Sickle on Raze, the Doran's Ring for Destiny. So Karma's going to get to her power spikes pretty fast. Um, but again, yeah, Raze is going to have a hard time getting uh, his Q through multiple members, right? You don't have a, a Tom Kench to, to, like, heal as you poke through. Uh, so you lose some possible synergies there. Uh, ultimately, it should still be reasonable. Uh, and, I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, you're, you're still relying on Azir, Hecarim, and Aatrox for a lot of the damage in this composition, regardless. All right, let's check in on this uh, Delayed Invade, too, though. They've got a Sweeper here for Immortals, so should be able to find that. And Hecarim is so well positioned to take away the Raptors. Feels pretty good here for uh, what should be Farming for Farming early versus the Skarner matchup. Double Raptors. This, this is a topic for pro junglers coming up recently that has been so so heavily contested um he's actually not gonna go for uh you know transitioning back to his red quadrant to go for uh the full just raptor denial and is continuing with red steel here before moving back over now since he does have aatrox on top side uh you know bottom side is gonna catch him and see him but it, it shouldn't mean a whole lot because aatrox versus scion early uh, you know, Revenge should be able to, to push that one out. And they've got defensive wardings on their own ramp. So he gets away with not only the Raptor Steel Freak, but he does it one better, Red 2. And Iconic, he's, is he not even going to go for top side at all? Like, is he going to get four camps and just AFK for like a minute and a half? Iconic, like, you knew for sure where he was, right? This was like a very obvious set of moves because you see the guy capture your Aspire, although I think you don't get that guaranteed because of uh, that changing uh, a couple years ago. But like, man, Iconic is screwed right now. Like, this man just wants to hard farm and now he can't. Like, he's got a gank now, right? Yeah, or, uh, you know, waste another 15 seconds after you finish Krugs for uh, the Scuttlecraft to spawn. Since bottom lane is pushing up, it's double range. You're not going to be able to gank there. Maybe a pass towards mid as Insanity is, is uh, pushing up on the Azir, but definitely not going to have a lot of Skarner threat early on. Meanwhile, Zerse does transition over to his red side of the map. Uh, let's see if they can, can try and use their pushing bottom lane to get something as far as blue buff or, or gromp here taken. Especially if Zerze did show up on top side of the map, that would be a possibility for going a little bit deeper. Insanity is keeping up pressure in mid lane, although Blaze Olive still getting good last hits. Yeah, interesting to see. Iconic has path down to the bottom side. I don't know if he knows he can take all these camps down here, but... Yeah, blue and gromp are his if he wants them, but he doesn't realize that's not the path they take. That man never showed himself. Because, uh, yeah, if there's a like, walk top lane, you'd be like, oh, he has red buff and no blue. We know which camps are up. Cool. You saw Raze come over like, okay, yes, Garner's stealing. He's not. All right. Well, cool. Uh, you're good then. He only did the normal five camps, and Zerse is just up a camp right now. Going to start this uh, scuttle himself. And ultimately, yeah, Immortals gets away with a solid invade where they poach away an extra buff and an extra camp. 
Yep, gonna be able to get uh, Top Crab no problem for himself. Teleport used pretty early on here by a Blaze All to get back out. Tier in hand here for him with the Doran's Ring, so should have plenty of mana for the entirety of the lane phase. And since Seraphine can see us from so far, really can use that range to stay safe, uh, should be able to farm up no problem. So far, so good. 600 gold lead to Immortals. I imagine Ray's having a great time with Spectral Sickle. I assume he's certainly earning more money than the Lulu. It's a lot harder to actually earn those stacks as Lulu. You don't really have that many um, unfair poke tools compared to the kind of range Senna has. So that's probably going to be a bit of a farm difference overall. Zerg's a nice little optimization, getting blue and crop together. Again, these camps absolutely could have been stolen. Golden Guardians had pressure in bot lane, but Iconic didn't know the path Zerg's took. Assumed he had grabbed blue. He hadn't. And ultimately, these camps are all up for the Hecarim. Regardless, no teleport used still by Insanity. Just fine sitting here in mid lane. So he's going to retain teleport advantage over Golden Guardians, over a Blaze Olive. And while there's not a huge amount of setup uh, you know, around the map, they should be able to continue to pressure hard uh, you know, towards the mid lane to be able to get openings uh, for movement. We've got an Infernal Dragon as Dragon number one. So that's going to be a big determining factor uh, for the bottom lane, definitely. Stick say farming up very nicely here on the Jinx. Core win condition for Golden Guardians that they must protect at all costs. Alrighty, right now looking around the bottom side as there is a ward inside the Dragon Pit. That gets spotted by the Sweeper. If it's going to be on for long enough, Iconic can indeed claim that one and earn his 10 gold. Niles able to walk away from the pullback for Revenge gets his own Q, gets a little bit of damage back and forth, but you can see a 5 CS difference. But again, Golden Guardians, they've got bot control. They've got the push overall. As I mentioned, Senna Karma doesn't have the most control of that lane, uh, and it means Golden Guardians with the push get to go walk over, and a pretty early dragon picked up at about 615. That's a good stack. That's a good start. Golden Guardians more and more playing around bottom side. Niles, you can't walk in a straight line against Aatrox. You walk to the side, that's how you get away from it. Ultimately, going to lose a little bit of health. Revenge level 6 is going to be threatening. Niall still has his TP, though, if he needs to ever go back to base and farm back up. He is looking like possible dive meat here, though. Uh, half health on the Scion. Does have a biscuit. So at least he's got that for him. But continuing to take harassment. Oh, wow. Actually gets pulled right back. I thought he was going to get out of the way. But because he gets pulled back, Revenge does not land Q3. And... Ultimately, Niall is going to be safe to recall, and as long as he doesn't get recall stopped by Hecarim, that's unrealistic to have happen. He's going to be fine over there, but Xerxes is level 6 already pretty early on. Iconic wants to fight for it. Gets the, the Gromp to reset, but there's a blue to steal. That's going to be easy. Yeah, they are going to be able to take that Spire away and hand off this blue to Insanity as well. Uh, pretty ideal situation here, and so they can keep up that mid lane pressure and try and start to control. Uh, you know, once Rift Road comes up here, uh, another minute for them, definitely a viable objective for Immortals. They've got uh, Revenge already forcing out Niles' teleport on top side. Should, with the extra blue buff here, be able to keep up uh, Azir pushing as well. But Iconic only slightly down there in the jungle and should be able to get his level 6 off of Red Quadrant. Oh, big play in the mid side. Good flash by a Blaze Olive. You saw Insanity try to bait it out. Wait, okay. And then on reflex, the Blaze Olive sees the ult, flash the way to safety. But still, ult for flash is a great cooldown positive trade for Insanity. So good job at the Immortals mid laner. Checking in on Niles. He had a TP back to the lane because he was so low, but was just shy of Bramble Vest Gold. So had to then immediately recall again and then walk back because he needed the item spike to play that lane better. Yeah, it definitely was dangerous uh, territory there, even with the Q3 missing in the last trade for Revenge with Xersei coming over for the possible dive. Had to be done. He's going to start really bleeding now, though, because the Aatrox, as you start to get more cooldown reduction, it's just so easy for him to lifesteal through these tank matchups, wear down on the Scion, healing himself back up, no problem. Bottom side also here getting their own turret plate for Immortals and accruing that gold. I would say eyes towards that Rift Trail we talked about first for them. Uh, pick that one up in hand, and then you can start to make big moves. Two and a half minutes still left on the Dragon, so uh, you have the freedom to try and get that solo lane gold funneling there with the Rift Herald. Yep, Miles gets away from the chains, gets a Grass proc back, and a little bit of Q damage makes it pretty close. We'll see how the lane resets now that 
They both bought with a 16 CS lead to the Immortals top laner. Careful with Jinx Rockets. They can AoE champions to pull aggro. Stixe able to be okay there as Newbie pulled it and then disengaged. So uh, no threat back onto the Jinx. He's going to be fine. 85 to 73 CS. So Stixe's up in gold, but Raze is as well. Keep in mind, Newbie's Sight Stone's not ready yet, but Raze has his. So uh, that shows you 500 gold earned faster. Still, the Jinx is the core component of the composition, and her farm is great. Now that's still what we're going to be looking at. Top lane going to be holding on as best he can. As you mentioned a little while ago, Kobe, shouldn't be hard to grab Harold because of all the top lane pressure. Iconic gets the smite to get uh, scuttle <laughs> vision, but I'm still not sure the Golden Guardians can actually contest the Herald itself anyway. Yeah, the, is going to have the permanent vision. Uh, Spire should be given up as well. Ablaze Olive going to have to seed control here around mid. Remember, Ablaze Olive has no flash from the last all-in from Insanity. Uh, so again, yeah, should easily be picked up. Then step two. Uh, get one of your solo lanes, big turret plate lead, pop off there, probably funnel that right into Azir so that Insanity can slot into the mid-game teamfight carry that he has been for Immortals this year. And honestly, this team feeling pretty good, uh, you know, about the 4-6 the and six record, have been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with most of these teams in the LCS uh, and, and come out looking quite good. After this reset here, see if he has uh, quite enough money, at least picks up the boots and plenty of time to recall before Dragon actually spawns. 50 seconds here and Iconic's already starting to clean up. Well, neither player gonna have teleport. Revenge pulled that recently to get his Iron Spike whip and get back in. Third turret plate nearly gone to the bottom side and that's you know, without Herald or anything. So really good job to the Golden Guardians duo lane. They are doing great. Uh, though a lot of teams have laned well against Rays and Destiny. Nice by Newbie, you saw him play a little bit back until the plate dropped. Make sure Sixth got solo gold. Uh, if you don't uh, touch the plates for the last, like, 20 seconds, uh, the local gold range on that is really, really short. So Newbie yeah. made sure all of it went to Sixth Good play. Little optimizations like that can really matter uh, as time goes on, especially when your comp is literally about one champion. <laughs> and supporting him, you really want the gold on him. All gold into Sticks A now. Please funnel, because that's where all the DPS is coming from. And uh, DPS is multiplied by multiple items here. He's working on it so far. Should just be uh, now. It's continuing to soak on the top side. And I want to see where Zerse actually decides to use this Rift Held if they uh, really can punish a Blaze Olive for being flashless. I want to see a more concentrated effort here from Immortals to try and get something off of this flashless uh, Seraphine in mid. You've got the Rift Jail. It should be able to, uh, you know, get some money off of turret plates that way as well. And, and that can transition you into Dragon Control. Bottom side of the map, though, is the thing they're worried about. Stixe still farming away. And they're actually just starting it up with without actually pulling anything off there. And this is teleport ready for a Blaze Olive, so he could join as well. Nice. Here comes the TP, here comes the plate. Neither top laner can join, but the 4v4 oh. Iconic gets the flash, he gets the pull, and puts him right back in the Chompers. That's first plug to the Golden Guardians. This is gonna be a formality of a dragon. What a pickup, great play. He got exactly the target we expected. Flash on the Karma, pull him on the Chompers, get dragon number two. Cloud Soul, the eventuality in this game of Blaze. All of gonna try to wave clear some, but mid turret's gonna go down to about one third with Shelly crashing in. So they do end up getting you know, their, their Rift Trail play mid, but instead of, you know, getting the priority mid first, then going for Dragon, just starting it up like this, and it is a Ocean Dragon, so it does apply the extra slow to Xerse. Uh Destiny, he can't get out of there. Skarner gets the speed up, flashes in, and that is easy kill for Team Stixe. The gold actually went to a Blaze Olive, though. They weren't able to give him the last hit. Uh, still, though, this is Moonstone completed for Seraphine, so Operation Group Up for Golden Guardians is a go. That's exactly what they wanted. And Immortals were going to get value out of that Rift Herald uh, kind of regardless, so in the aftermath, yep. yeah, they do throw it down mid and they finish off one extra turret plate with a couple autos there from Insanity, but uh, Golden Guardians feeling so good about that. Um, you know, first blood as well as when you're the team that wants to group up and fight five on five always with everybody around Stixie, around the Jinx, you're the team that wants to be stacking dragons because that's how you draw the other team in uh, here for Immortals and, and also allows you to be able to get that presence on River. Uh, right now, Teleport Advantage is with the top side of Golden Guardians. Niles has it, Revenge does not. They'll both have it in plenty of time for the next dragon to spawn. The time is going to be pretty tight for a Blaze Olive for that one, but uh, regardless, one plate goes down in the mid lane. The game is tied in gold, but the CS is on the Jinx, and the two Dragons are with Golden Guardians already. 
And honestly, I uh, gotta say, as uh, playing a few Jinx games recently, it feels really, really good to get a Cloud Drake at some point. Since you never build haste at all in any way on that character, getting 12% off your ultimate feels outstanding. So if they get Dragon number three, you get you know you get the nice cross map plays that can feel really nice. But uh, regardless, uh, it is first items coming across there. Kraken Slayer done. Stride Breaker in there for revenge. We'll see if he can get himself into any fights. The thing that I have hated most about the resurgence of Jinx, because starting, oh, well, maybe we have a Skarner play here. Loose Might, good flash by Raze, but slow. They can get round two. Nah, the Root's going to come through, so no way back in, but still really big damage. Summoner heal burn. Raze down two Summoners off the threat of Iconic showing up. And he's looking for a little bit more. Insanity has mid push, though, so not a lot of room for Golden Guardians to work with. Raze can heal back up off of this ward. Xerxes come down on the Hecarim. Double buffs are ready, too, so Golden Guardians can't get uh, too deep. Won't be able to push much off of this. Actually, mid lane, they shove out Insanity. Comes to nothing, though. Yeah, ultimately nothing going through there. Sticks are going to go back to his side of the map, down to about two thirds, but can sustain back up a little bit. And now as he just sits there, farming the wave, we look back at top side where Niles just, you know, plugging away, stacking armor. Uh, there is eventually threat of an Azir in team fights, and I mean, Azir is honestly happy to hit Sion a whole bunch, so uh, may want to diversify his build path at some point, but Niles really just building for the lane, saying, I want to really, really make sure I'm not bleeding too many turret plates, I'm not bleeding too much farm. We're going to armor stack early on and then build the Mythic. Good root on a 6A is good damage. The Chomper is going to prevent the chase from going too much farther. A bit of damage going in, but yeah, he's healing right back up. That man's almost certainly got Legend Bloodline going for that one with the 25 health per auto. All right, well, we've got plenty of time for ranting about Jinx then, because uh, as okay, a jungler, she's actually one of the most annoying AD carries. Did you know Jinx is the most annoying one to follow up Ash? Because yes, Hawkshot still is the most annoying thing to come from the bottom lane. Okay. But second most annoying, and especially because so many of your solo queue teammates don't know that Jinx explosion on her rocket execution damage actually works on neutrals too, then yes. I get all my teammates standing around Dragon or Baron, and the enemy Jinx will fire off a rocket. Baron gets executed from like 2,000 health because uh -huh. it's execution damage on missing health on Baron with, and it's with, tons of, with tons of mega health here. And then they're like, WTF, how'd you miss that smite? Well, guess what? <laughs> because Jinx rocket did freaking 2K damage to it, okay? So yeah. uh, th those to me are the two most tilting AD carries in it's solo you know, play against as a jungler. Uh, you know, it, it's going to take a lot to knock Ash off the off the pedestal, yeah. but Jinx is right up there. And, and the best part about your teammates going WTF is their fault because if they're just yeah. not in the range of Baron... Just block it! <laughs> well, right. So, so first of all, Rocket does not natively hit jungle monsters. So, exactly. like, if it doesn't hit them, it won't hit Baron either. So, one, dodge it is an option. Or two, don't tank it while next to Baron if you're going to block it. Like, yeah, do stay. either things. Don't just deliver her the last hit. So, Stand it is always... Stand at the edge of the pit. <laughs> yeah. It is always your teammate's fault when Jinx steals Baron. It is the opposite of the jungler's fault when Jinx steals a Baron. And yet... No, I'm, I'm with you. I know. And yet we get the flame. Oh, here we go. Flank teleport. Can they get behind on Stixie? Eh? Niles has TP, but at the same time, it's the squad able to get together. Of course, Niles is already nearby anyway. And ults back to safety, saying, I don't want to die to Hecarim. And in fact, he will not. So it is Dragon number three claimed. Golden Guardians there on the play. And they're on their way to a 2240 Dragon Soul. Immortals just tied in gold. They can push down mid a little bit. They may indeed knock this turret down. But I mean, who cares? It's it's Golden Guardians safely reaching uh, pretty soon two items on 6A. And are oh, they already on Dragon Point? Yes, sir. Uh, being able to take down mid turret is is a little drop in the bucket here for Immortals. As we said, when you're the team grouping up, you've got Skarner and Scion frontline for yourselves with multiple people buffing up this Jinx. They want to be able to rely on those dragons to draw Immortals to them. But Niles actually takes a lot of damage here. All right, ulti coming across. This is going to be a real team fight. Iconic is running out of health. He's going to find an ult for a little bit. A couple of knockouts coming through. They're healing him so much, but he finally drops. And without getting excited, they do not have the damage. It's time to run away. Immortals, yeah, off they go. Back to the lanes, back to this Rift Ooh. Herald just for good measure. Good team fight for Immortals. Slugfest here for Immortals. And big moves here for Revenge, flanking around, whittling away, doing so much damage there to get them this opening. Once Skarner uh, ultimate goes off and they're able to get him right back in, big kill here for Immortals, resulting in another Rift Herald. 
However, uh, let's take another look at how it started out. Okay, so Iconic gets rooted up, and since uh, Backside was under attack, they they really had no follow-up here for this small corridor for the extra damage. You see Sticks having a hard time stepping up, uh, and they can't get back over the walls. I think that's a pretty poor spot for them to actually fight, uh, you know, with there being a lot more mobility on the Immortal side. And here we are. Looking down the barrel of three minutes to Cloud Soul and Golden Guardians. Yes, they lost the last fight, but the power sparks are still coming in. Moonstone not far away here for this Lulu. We are seeing lethality, by the way, for Senna. Ray's going for this one, not going for the more DPS focused Kraken Slayer build. Uh, I think it's 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 a close call regardless. I think they're both very good builds, so it's it's more a game state situation. And if you're trying to be bursty, then Lethality's going to do it for you because you know one auto Q ult is going to be way more through an Eclipse than it is through a Kraken Slayer. So if you expect to have short fights, that's the build. In long fights, you're losing to Jinx with two supports anyway. So you know I kind of like the idea yeah. of indexing towards look, we win through playing a certain way, so I'm going to build towards that way also. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to answer with as well uh, because you're like, okay, well that's already kind of Golden Guardian's win con, so. Uh, don't kind of want to play into that for Immortals on their side, though. We have also seen multiple times um, Zersei did a good job. You you Hecarim ult as a, if the Hecarim ult as the Skarner ults you, you can still you're still unstoppable. You still can get yours off, and then the fear uh, is going to negate that engage. So he does have to be careful as he's on the front line. Time his ultimate well, um, so he doesn't get pulled back in for free by Iconic. Right now, good wrap around by him as well. They're going to find a bit of the knockback, and here we go for the rest of it. Ulti going to be flashed away by Lazal. Ult's going to come across for the charm, but the chase down for Insanity finds the second straight kill for Immortals. Good job there. Xerxes setting it up. Good follow-through by the rest of the squad. Niles forced to run away as well. He could be the target, actually. Runs across them. Luke going to lose the ultimate. Knocked up. Could be pulled back. Could be knocked into the air, and he might just lose his life. Three kills now in a row for Immortals. Niles did not need to be there. Took a greedy path back. Mid lane tier two is dead. Inhibitor going to take a crash as well. Nearly gone on top of it. And Immortals, it's time to reset and set up for that dragon. This is what it looks like when a team built around Jinx is not around Jinx, Freak. Good flank from Xersei, gets behind him through their own jungle. This is the advantage of taking down mid tower this early. They've got vision control of Golden Guardian's side of the map. That's why Xersei gets the flank. They have the control ward here behind Raptors. And then now is heading over. It's still just another straggling member that, that is just one part of a, a team fight here that has to be grouped up around 6A to have any sort of threat. And so Niles also gets picked off there by Immortals, as great as it is for Golden Guardians to have this huge dragon lead and and want to be able to protect Stixe. And he's got yep. both summoners and he's been doing quite well for the start of this game. So much gold is going over to Immortals. Oh, never yep, mind. there's the pullback. QSS burn, Destiny, smart play. Rocket can't quite kill. And out he goes with about 100 health left. But that is some decent timing. He's gone when it's time to set up for this Dragon Soul. He can run back, but he brought Teleport. Destiny can get right back onto the map, TP right back in and play the 5-on-5. Five five. And this time it's that Skarner ulti or Jinx Rocket. All right. Let's see about this pick on Niles. He's going to use his ult to get away. That's definitely one team fight tool down, but they'd much rather have him alive and not have that tool. They have plenty of other options there. Iconic does have Turbo Chem Tank ready on the Skarner, and they can go for it. Immortals, though, looks like they're going to be able to steal this one away and cut the legs out from the Golden Guardians. Good positioning by them. With all of this gold that they've gotten in these couple of uh, picks that they got through the jungle, first top side up around the second rift trail, then consecutive ones here mid. And Immortal is going to use this giant gold lead to be able to put a stop here. Golden Guardians, though, if they get one opening and, and they are able to pick up the uh, the Cloud Soul, that is going to be very big for this team fight because a lot of you know ult reliance uh, champions here for Golden Guardians and you yourself mentioned how much you like uh, like it for Jinx. Yeah, it actually works. It's it's surprisingly good on Jinx. You just you just find yourself like constantly in spots where hey, it's up again, and I can actually help with this like random fight in the side lane. Now, that said, side lane skirmish is not a thing Golden Guardians wants. Like, even with the Jinx struck up every single time, Niles doesn't beat Revenge, a Blazol doesn't beat Insanity. So, <laughs> this kind of comp, it's okay, it's less relevant. You got a Fiora up there, uh, you care a lot about sending Rockets her way. But uh, either way, yeah, it is still one away from, from Soul Point. Iconic obviously cares a lot on Skarner. It's real perfect there. You just zoom around back with the, with your, uh, your victim, and 
you know, off off you go, uh, delivering Jinx an extra kill. Niles is trying to clear down to the bottom side. And yeah, Revenge is, is consistently pushing down there, but not going for turret damage, playing it much more defensively. Immortals pushing in the top side instead, and Sanity's getting the wave in there, and that's going to be some damage in that turret. There's no I in team unless you are Stixay now in this game, because he has to live, he has to do everything for himself. The team has to do everything for him as well. He is is Golden Guardians at this moment. And let's see if Immortals will be able to take him down. They've been pretty good at keeping up this deeper vision and, and picking off Golden Guardians members while they're trying to deal with side waves. But even just now, a small speed boost onto Stixay, rocket form extra range, that is three hits onto Raze, and he has to go heal. All righty. Moving around yet again, seeing where everyone else can go as the turrets well, the Azir turrets fall. We still sit at this four and a half thousand gold difference. Jinx, not the most single target damage. I mean, not to really get to three full items. It looks like he's going towards Lord Dominic's regards as the third pickup there. So um, actually a pretty low DPS build overall because you're not going Phantom Dancer or Hurricane, which are the, the actual like DPS zeal up upgrades. He went for RFC for some poke, which uh, different discussion for different time. But Lord Dominic's also um, there's only so much bonus armor on the opposing squad. This last Whisper is only doing so much work compared to, say, Infinity Edge. I think he wants to Power Spike a bit earlier and get a completed item on the inventory, and it's, you know, maybe the best 2500 gold item he could buy, but it is not going to be as explosive as you would have wanted. 6A is, is not indexed quite as heavily towards sustained damage as, I mean, his team might really need. See if he can pump out enough then, because they're already looking mid once again for the possible pick here. Uh, trying to buff up Iconic over and over here with the speed. He does have Hex Flash, so any of these brush that you get control wards in, possible opportunities for these picks, pulling somebody into the Jinx and then trying to chase somebody else down. That's what Immortals are trying to avoid. They still have this lead. They're trying to keep them bottled up while not getting picked off by this Skarner. Uh, QSS check. We've got one on Karma, one on Azir. Still, Senna is definitely a viable target, though she is kind of hard to get on with the Shroud and everything. Uh, if you can tag her with some sort of slow, definitely still possible for them, though. For sure. Revenge, 15. Still one level up on Niles. He's been winning top lane the entire time. He's still doing it, but splitting down to the bottom side. Has teleport available if there's a play somewhere else in the map. Insanity splitting as well. I mean, this is the strength of Immortals. Their wave clear with Senna Karma is outstanding. They're really never going to lose turrets if they're willing to, you know, burn a couple of cooldowns for it as the side lane turrets just fall. Again, four to two, the turret score. Both side lanes doing far better. A 50 CS lead for Insanity, a 75 CS lead for Revenge. A Blaze of Insanity were laning equally for the first half of the game. Up until like 15, 20 minutes, they were neck and neck. And then suddenly a Blaze Olive, he's not getting XP anymore. He's not getting gold anymore. Insanity is just off to the races though, level 16. Yeah. And look at that, alongside Xerxes. Hey, look, they're starting Baron. They've got so much threat. TP's coming across. This could be a real fight. Iconic wants in. Xerxes, not an easy target. They're going to grab the Spire and they're going to start now on themselves. It's 5k health. I mean, this is doable. Xerxes does not have a QSS. They could theoretically ultimate make this happen. Niles can tank, but is your positioning okay? Jinx can't really look both ways. A bit of damage and revenge. He ults away. Destiny gonna get shot a couple of times. Pretty good damage for Stixa, but the rocket wouldn't be enough. Stixa gonna kite sideways. He'll be fine. Keeps the damage going up. Goes for some chickens. The revenge grabs one more, but it gave enough space for Golden Guardians to get a bit of control over mid. They can knock the wave down and look at mid turret, but not enough to kill it. Raze is there. Revenge is there. That one's not gonna get sieged on, but, but, Dragon's up in five seconds. Teleport's going back in the mid lane. They're gonna deal some damage right now. Zerks are gonna come over. Can Golden Guardians knock down this Dragon in time? Can can they otherwise zone out Immortals? This Dragon will die in about 10 seconds, and the Immortals have to get in, in time. No ultimate here for Revenge, but he's positioned for the flank. They can't get Niles, in, the Dragon's stun. done! Good, 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 right there by Niles. But now the fight has started. Zerks are going to be pushed backwards. They're going to get the suppression onto the Aatrox. It's now built some space, but they found Jinx. He's rocketed back in, and Stixay is dead. You are the team of Golden Guardians, and Immortals found him for the kill. There is no fight left. It is only Golden Guardians running away. Thankful they have Cloud Soul to run faster. Oh, they lost their game of Protect the President, but at what cost? Soul is picked up. They give over the Baron. Immortals going to be able to pick this one up. No Jinx means they should definitely not go poking around here. Uh, they do have plenty of wards. Honestly, Xerxes is a little bit low on Hecarim, uh, but they shouldn't be too worried with it. I don't know no big DPS threat. 
Yeah, on the side of Golden Guardian. So I don't know. Maybe Iconic, uh, he, he has Hex Flash, but no real way to get in the pit. Six is alive. He rocketed just now. So here we go. Are we getting the variance too? No, we're not. Easy pick up there. <laughs> Good job by Immortals. They get a recall stop, whatever. That, that was a nice play, though. O overall, you know, really, really well done by Immortals. We're going to see who made that play, but getting that pick was gigantic. Okay, so review of uh, Dragon Soul fight here. Yes, they are able to burn it down, but then look at the focus here from Immortals. Good job by them. Identifying 6A, only threat. We got to go in. Everybody backs up. All of Golden Guardians are on the right half of the screen. So Xerxes is able to just right on in there, go straight for Stixe, all four members of Immortals, focus fire him down. Everybody from Golden Guardians lost their minds going after Revenge flank there, the Ultless Aatrox. And Stixe, the Jinx, left all alone in the Dragon Pit by himself. Luckily, that's he, reviewable. He chose to. Yeah, <laughs> he chose to and went after Insanity, but again, he went Rapid Fire Cannon Lord Dominix. You do not have good single target damage against champs like Azir with a build like that. If that was PD or if like that's Phantom Edge or Infinity Edge, maybe you kill Insanity in time. But that build is not going to delete targets, especially not squishy ones. So uh, that that one's on Stixe for bad target selection. Should have kited back with the team. Should have been going after Aatrox, things like that. But now, Immortals. How much can they do with Baron? They've got a 7,000 gold lead. They've got Baron Balvan to get more of it done. And it's time to turn our attention to the fact that Insanity He's 1-0-2. Oh, the rest of the squad's doing pretty well, and they're looking to knock down the base. All right, Baron Buff going to do a lot of work here for Immortals. Revenge already 17 on this Aatrox. Still yet to die with the Azir Siege on bottom side too. Immortals don't have to let up any pressure. Mid turret's about to fall down. Uh, Revenge can take care of that one, and the rest of the team just has to evade. And they just scoop him in. They wanted to engage the 5v4, but Immortals got away from Cyan, and an easy scoop means a kill on Denials. Iconic wants revenge. Not nah, four levels down. Either way, he kites <laughs> back. They weren't going to get it away. So an easy retreat for revenge, and Golden Guardians just give this up. There's no way you get any victories out of this one. Sure, there's no playmaking tools right now. The scoop is gone from the Azir, but you're going to lose this part of your base. It's time to wait for the respawns and play at the next turrets. All right, Immortals are going to get a lot of value out of that fight at Dragon. Baron buff results in two inhibitors destroyed. They still have 40 seconds to work with, so they could whittle away at some of these turrets. Uh, Niles isn't there, so no front line. Going to try. Eight seconds on the side. In the meantime, the turrets are going to fall rapidly here. When can they re-engage? They're going to get pulled back. They're going to find the target. Big Charm comes across. Here comes the Hecarim into the back line, and he gets the big shield. Zerx are going to stay alive with the Xerox gauge popping as well. But the oh, team is respawned. Five on five, going for the Nexus. But Golden Guardians are there in time to defend. Is the re-engage going to be anything? They need one kill for the Jinx resets. One kill, and they can kill the rest of them. Raze drops, and here's the chase down. Scion finds the double slow. Keep going in. It's time for Jinx to chase him out. A good ult for Insanity is a game saver. That ult was massive. Get excited, time's out. And Golden Guardians, what could have been four kills is only one. Oh, yeah, you're definitely sweating after that one, Freak. Insanity clutches it out at the Raptor Pit wall, walls them all off. No chase available for the Golden Guardians, but devastation laid to their base as punishment for the miscommunication at the Dragon Fights. Sticks a left, the rest of the team went right, and it results with your Nexus being vulnerable. They didn't leave a very deep ward, but there is one at the entrance. I believe that is a Golden Guardian's ping, though, so I think they, they noticed as the retreating Immortals laid that ward down, or maybe it's even uh, seen by the control ward. It is, uh, so they, they're very well aware. No uh, base uh, backdoor shenanigans. Here's a look at the pull, though. Zerse just charges right in off the opportunity, has a big shield here uh, to get away from it, but Jinx gets a hold of Raze here. Sticks a rockets, start firing away, landed the slow with the Scion uh, shout, and then he's able to follow up here with the charge. Insanity waits for the nice moment here at the pass, cuts them all off and allows the rest of Immortals to scramble out. No chase down here possible. Guess what? Dragon is coming up here. All right. Elder Dragon sticks a Guardian Angel. Still hate it, but we'll move on as Immortals are going to be looking to push <laughs> the base and make it afraid. Because guess what? Double inhibitor is down. No next turret's alive. Stick say, you have three Guardian Angels on your team. It's called Champion Select. Just build damage. That's all I'm saying. But Elder Dragon is the play. Xerxes up a level on Iconic, trying to fight over Ward Control right now. A couple of them down for Golden Guardians, though. They've got some vision of their own side of the jungle, but Immortals owns the path out of that end of the river. They own the banks. 
And that's the important thing, because they're up 9,000 gold. It's you know amazing how that one works out. But uh, right now, they're going to take down the wards. Golden Gardens wants to get back onto the map. They want to be able to contest for Elder, but their time is always limited as Revenge pushes in mid, and they know they can always threaten the Nexus. Three teleports are available for Immortals. Aatrox, Azir, and Karma can just end the game. And so making the choice is difficult. Golden Guardians cannot make these plays, and Revenge is still there. And at a moment's notice, two more can join him. Elder Dragon being attacked. You could rock it right now. Nice attempt. Went down to 500. Iconic cannot quite find this onto Revenge just yet. Needs the team to come around. When does the ult come across? Newbie's nearby. Destiny has come back over, though. When will they go for it? Revenge does have QSS, makes it hard to ult him. He's just holding on to that one. And look at that, winning the 1v2. Without Jinx, you can't win. There's uh, minions inside the base, by the way. They're getting teleported to, but this is a free kill. They can actually pick off this Azir, or at least, oh, okay, maybe not the Aatrox. That's going to be a tough one. They find some damage. They're getting pushed around. Ult comes across. They suppress one, though. Can they find the kill? Yes, they've knocked down Xerxes, and it's time for Jinx to start dealing damage because they're going to find Revenge. That's a very, very tanky Nile. Scion will live. There's two for the Jinx. It's time oh. to go for number three. The scoop comes across with the Elder Dragon buff, they found a couple of kills, and the Garden Angel's gonna mean absolutely nothing, and the game is going to end. Immortals, at the very end of it all, get the Bud Light Ace, they will knock down Golden Guardians and improve to five wins, just one behind playoff position. Oh my goodness, well played to Immortals, what a funny game there here from the Golden Guardians. Uh, Revenge was having the time of his life in this game. Just beating up on side in the top lane, pushing out those lanes, gets the side wave advantage, running into the base, fighting off the Golden Guardians team when Jinx is not there. It's so easy for a lifesteal tank. No damage there, no healing cutting there. So Aatrox with Conqueror just gets to, you know, fend off all the opponents. And uh, and that is another Immortals win on the board. They have really been hanging in there towards the middle of the standings, clearly establishing themselves, uh, I feel like, above these bottom tier teams, um, you know, with a solid placement there. And that says a lot, too, because they were one of the teams that did have a lot of late arrivals, uh, have been invested in their academy players, keeping Insanity on, for another split here with the full starting spot, voting for confidence for him and, and putting revenge up there as well uh, uh, for the solo lane. This is a deathless game from him. So yeah. I really do like that kind of renewed faith from, uh, from Immortals. Yeah, so well done to them. Five wins right now. Their record so far just below 50-50. Their chief opponent for playoffs right now is Team Liquid. One game ahead of them, and they're going to play tomorrow. If they play on form, that's a tie for sixth and a road towards that playoff spot. That'll be an exciting one to watch as we move on to our 12th games you know, tomorrow. That's going to do it for me and Kobe. But after the break, the Tigers will be talking insanity in our Verizon post-game interview. Stick around.